Hi, everybody. We wanted to put together a very short discussion on osteonecrosis of the hip. Um, it's a problem that a lot of patients, over 20,000 a year in the United States, but a lot of patients, especially younger patients, come to us, um, and there are just a lot of questions about why and how this occurred and, and how to deal with it. And so we thought we'd take some time and just look a little bit at the anatomy and some of the findings that we see typically before and during surgery that lead to the level of dysfunction that this problem often creates. All right, so osteonecrosis is known by several names. There's avascular necrosis, aseptic necrosis, uh, AVN. It all comes down to the same thing, and it's a limitation or a lack of blood supply to the top of the femoral head. We can see in this anatomical drawing, the blood supply to the femoral head comes from below up towards the femoral head, and that's done by the lateral femoral and medial circumflex arteries. These send off little branches or little capillaries that bring oxygen and nutrients to the top of the ball. But the blood supply only comes from one direction. There's not a redundant blood supply. So if any one of these small capillaries gets cut off, then the bone that is being nourished by that part will eventually die. And you can see in the lower half of the slide, a, a normal femoral head, which has cancellous bone and trabeculation, as opposed to an avascular necrotic head, which is beginning to collapse from lack of oxygen and nutrients. There are multiple classification schemes out there. The most common one is the FECOT one, and they're based on a combination of MRI as well as radiographic findings. Um, the most important stage that we look on is the difference between stage two and three. And there's either pre-collapse stage, where the femoral head is still intact. There could be elements that are necrotic, but the femoral head is still round, versus stage three, four, and beyond, where the head has fractured or collapsed. Once the ball is fractured, everything fundamentally changes mechanically. And we can see the reason for this when we look at a specific process called a subchondral fracture. And radiographically, the key mark here is something called a crescent sign. And we see the crescent sign right below the surface of the femoral head. And within the crescent sign, the trabecular bone or the cancellous bone begins to pull away from the surface. And therefore, the overlying surface loses support and loses the ability to bear weight functionally. When we look at the cross section, we can see how the two arrows, how the bone is pulling away from the surface and creating a lucency. And then when we look really closely, and it's best seen on the lateral view, you can actually see a crescent sign or a lucency as the underlying bone pulls away from the femoral head. The MRI is a very helpful diagnostic tool as well in the diagnosis of necrosis. You can see on the left side over here, the bone is nice and healthy and white. We can see the entire strub structure is intact. In contrast, in osteonecrosis, you can see how the bone turns black on the other side. And then the other important thing with the MRI is that we can stage the size of the lesion. So we can see it's a large size that takes up most of the weight-bearing dome. So we're looking at size as well as arc and location of the defect, and that helps with surgical staging. I'll show you a live example shortly, but it's important even to highlight the difference between osteoarthritis, which is the most common diagnosis we deal with, versus osteonecrosis, which is the death of the underlying bone. Osteoarthritis is a disease of cartilage. So here's cartilage overlying the surface of the bone, but the bone itself is completely healthy and intact. So it has a very solid substructure. In contrast, in necrosis, the cartilage is intact. But you can see underneath this cartilage right here, there's a fracture line and underneath this healthy cartilage, the bone is dead. So our osteoarthritis, again, is a disease of cartilage on top of typically healthy bone. And in contrast, necrosis is a disease of bone with overlying healthy cartilage. And I'll show you what that looks like in the next video. This is another example of osteonecrosis. Uh, you can see that the necrotic half and the healthy half, here the bone is nice and firm, cartilage adheres to the surface of the bone. 
Over here, the undersurface of the bone has died and the cartilage above is just peeled off like this, just peeled off like an orange peel. And the bone underneath is irregular with deep crevices and grooves as it's collapsing and falling away from the surface. So smooth, healthy bone, cartilage falling away, large divots and crevices with structural collapse. So this is a, a good example of osteonecrosis. You can see much of the femoral head is fine. Uh, this is bone, this is healthy. This is the upper surface, this is the lower surface. You can see all this is intact. Even the cartilage appears to be intact, but if you look at the weight-bearing dome, what you'll see on x-ray is something called a subchondral fracture, where the bone will be healthy and then all of a sudden you'll see a big divot. This is what that divot is. And what's happened, all the bone underneath here has died. Okay. And then the cartilage on top, no longer attached to anything living, just delaminates like an orange peel that just peels off. And this is why it's so painful. So the bottom part is alive, but the weight-bearing portion here is no longer alive, and the osteochondral junction becomes incompetent like that.